fun magic, ma magic moment. So, in fact, I would like to reach a point where you can get a what would you readable pi you, you and pipe it to some function, use pipeline and pipe it to some function and pipe it to a uh, node writable and it all magically works because of async, uh, async iterables. So that's the, the vision, that's my vision at least, to fix our problems, okay? Because just use JavaScript, right? That's the thing, just use JavaScript. Don't invent any more crazy APIs for, 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 for stuff. Um, so if you want to get involved, it's we are not JS, we are looking for new collaborators. So that's, that's good. And uh, again, Nearform, we are hiring, so talk to us. <laughs> and if you need some help with your Node.js, you know, please, and you know, more. <laughs> 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 and thank you. <laughs>
Now, I understandably, uh, in today's world where everyone's been told to go to work from home and all our children are sort of, you know, we're homeschooling, um, that's going to be really tight for most of you, if not all of you. Um, and so you're going to have to work out by yourselves and with your partners and your children, how does that really work, right? Uh, we'll come on to that uh, a little bit as well. Um, and you want to try and avoid that space if you absolutely can. And I know not everyone's privileged to have like an area or an office that they can build at home, but you want to try and avoid it uh, outside of those professional hours if you can. Um, but avoiding those in professional hours can also mean um, clearing what I call the detritus of um, of work, right? Your notebook where you're taking notes. Maybe uh, you know, you know, if you're a dev, I know I. Whenever I'm doing any dev, I'm not. I'm sketching ideas out on pieces of paper, whatever, and it gets cluttered. Take it all away, put it away. That clean desk policy that people love at work. It's actually really useful when you're at home because it takes you away from work mode when you're there. If you have to be outside. Uh, outside of you know, professional hours. Um, so I said, obviously, right now, you're going to be sharing your home with you know partners or children, uh, pets, um, who probably are very confused as why why you're at home so much. Um, but you do share your home, so you've got to show some respect for their professional boundaries or their play boundaries, if they're pets and children. Um, about th th They're also at work, and they also have a little space, and, and they're also in that frame of mind. And... You know, one of the big things that people used to complain about is at home is, oh, you know, my partner wants me to do X, Y, and Z. Well, I think if you're if you're at home now and you're both working from home, there's going to be that thing of, you know, I I understand, right? I can't I can't just just go and do the washing or just hang this up or just go to the shops and do the week shop, whatever, right? It doesn't work like that. You've got to you've got to get into your professional mode as, as soon as possible when you sit down. Um, and kids. Kids are space invaders, uh, especially if you've got young children. I've got a ten-year-old. Um, have no problems with wandering up when I'm on uh, when I'm on a conference call and going, "What are you doing, Daddy? Can you come and play?" Um, and that's great. And I'm like, I really wish I could. That's far more interesting than what I'm doing now. But um, you've got to have a chat with them, obviously, about you know if you can about how to get your attention without disruption. And it's okay. They're at home, and you know you're one of their parents, and you know they expect you to interact because all they know is when you're at home, you're in family mode, but right now you're in professional mode. So they've got, you've got to kind of guide them through that and you've got to make allowances. Not every child is going to, uh, going to cotton on to that. Right. And I said earlier, uh, you know, clear your professional space, please don't leave it, uh, untidy and, and cluttered. You want to make sure that if you're walking past that desk, uh, you don't look over and go, Oh, I, maybe I'll just send that email or I'll just take a look at that. Or I'll just, I just hack some more code out because, you know, I've got half an hour before I have to do whatever, right? Don't, especially when you work from home, it's really easy to get into this 24-7 uh, mode. And I'm sure lots of you looking are like, yeah, yeah, I can understand that. And you know, I can myself. Um, so it's really important that you step away from that. Um, let's move on to what I call uh, voice and reason. Sorry, I'm driving two decks because I've, I've got a thing up here. Um, so I've got this called voice and reason, what I uh, conceptually uh, uh what I conceptually call voice and reason. Um, and it's about really how you engage. And when you're working from home and if you've not done it before, and you, more importantly, even if you're doing it before, a lot of your team might not be and the people you regularly connect with may not do. Um, they're going to want to and you should want to connect visually and regularly, right? If I, I always say if you're leading a team remotely, and I've, and I've done this with very large teams that are global, um, you want to take time, spend at least five minutes on a conference call, um, in the morning with one to ones, right? That can take you an hour. That may, and sometimes it's taken me two hours to do that. The number of people, that's okay. It's part of what you have to do as a leader when you're doing remote work uh, and leading a remote team. It's really important you keep that connectivity going and you keep that presence in their mind going. That's not a presence of oversight, but it's a supportive presence where they say, you know what, Kush is still there, right? I know I can call on him. I've talked to him. He's in my head. It's really, really curious how human beings build that kind of mental model of the day. So make sure you're there right at the front, right? Because they, that you are the person. If you're a leader, that they want, they need your help. Um, use your voice to power your words and not email. Please don't write War and Peace. Um, I personally have a very simple discipline. If your email is more than ten, 10 lines long, I'm not reading it um, because it's just a waste of my time, right? Um, and time, especially, and I'll come on to this a little bit more, but time's really important right now that you're working from home. Um, so, so make a call, right? Click the button if you're in Teams or Zoom or whatever, you, whatever you're using. Just click the button and make a call. They'll pick up, right? So that's really important, by the way, that you set your status. Everyone normally ignores this, expecting the, the, the app or whatever you're using to ma magically detect that you're not at your keyboard. 
if you're not um, if you're not uh, at work, like in work mode, you stepped away, set it to dis- no, do not disturb or whatever. So no, and remember to take it off. Right, it's a really good piece of discipline. Um, so sharing is a really important part, obviously, of being um, of being remote. But you make a conscious effort, right? Uh, and we get into this mode of people who've been used to remoting, uh, used to working remotely for so long um, that we just I am things, right? Um, but it's just very quick. It's it's almost the kind of Twitter feed of 140 characters or whatever they allow these days. Um, but it's really important you share those positive lessons, positive challenges, and lessons you learn from problems, um, and make sure everyone understands the patterns that worked for you, what you you know where you fell over, how you got yourself back up. It's really important that you give those experiences back, even. If, especially if you've got team members who aren't used to doing this remotely, are used to having a physical support network, that's really important. Um, don't be tempted to stay silent, right? If you're falling behind, uh, if, you're, if you're lost, uh, if, you're, if you're new to this, you've got to raise your hand. Um, don't stay silent. As a leader, you've got to pick, pick these people up, right? Um, this is the same thing you do if you're in an office, right? You know when you're talking in the group team, you can spot the people who aren't contributing and you can work out why that is. Is it just, you know, they haven't got anything to say, which is fine, or actually are they... Are they, are, they, are, they, are they suffering in some way? Are they doubting themselves in some way? Especially when you're working remotely, right, in this kind of isolating environment, if you're new to it, you can, you can get a lot of self-doubt and that's, a, that's quite a stigging pain and you wanna make sure you spot those people early and give them the support they need. Um, and, and the last thing I'd really say about this is uh, stay composed. Um, composure is your greatest ally in, in, in any adversity, obviously, but um, especially if you've got a large team that doesn't understand how to work remotely they're all learning you know there's technical problems there's procedural problems they've got the anxiety of what's going on at the moment um they've got the anxiety of hey well i still have a job right massive amounts of of doubt fear and anxiety happening around the world if you're a leader even if you're not um your composure will will see you through it um remember that frustration should rise in an organization it doesn't spread right if if you find your team um get all you know catching frustration for want of a better phrase it means you're not you're not listening to their frustration or you're not able to solve it so you need to push that up your chain of command as well if you have those kind of chains of command um it's really important that you don't let your your team stew with problems whether you're remote or hybrid or or on premise um so let's uh, let's move on driving two days it's like multitasking not not really my thing um so uh we talked about time uh but uh, there's this topic really of time and well-being um, and that's really about um, how you do personal time management. Um, and the important thing is to start and stop your day. Um, 24/7 working is really easy to get into if you're working remotely. Um, you know, to say, yeah, I'll you know I'll wake up. I mean, I do it all the time, right? I woke up this morning. The first thing I did, I checked my email, and that was six o'clock in the morning. Um, and you kind of have to go, oh, do I really need to? Do I need to really need to do this? Um, uh, so, 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 what's 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 the start of your day? Is it nine o'clock? Is it eight thirty? What's the stop of your day? Right. Make sure you've got time for lunch. Right. As a leader, make sure that you know you are seeing that if people are sending you emails at six, seven in the morning, you've got to stop that and say, "Wait, well, hold on a minute." Right. Unless they're on call or something, you've got to say, "You don't need to do that." Right. Be active in saying, "Listen, I'm not going to respond to it. I'm not even going to see it." Right. Another really cool trick. Well, not cool tricks, I get, but but a trick that I generally tend to use is. At the end of my day, I will put a little uh, out of office on that says, listen, I'm off work. Um, unless it's urgent, I won't see your email till till 8.30, 9 a.m. So, you know, call me if it's urgent. And it's, it, it will just get used to people um, knowing that you're off work. Um, please, please, please avoid social media. It is the greatest time killer on the planet. At the best of times, uh, most of us will sit there endlessly scrolling, right? It, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an evil thing. Um, but especially today and what's going on, um, lots of people obviously wanting to find out information. Very easy to get lost in that and, and you know, click frenzy of going from one side to another. And before you know it, you're convinced that the zombie apocalypse is just around the corner. Um, but actually, you know, it's fine. Just just turn your social media off. Um, obviously, keep you informed, but don't get carried away. Um, your, your well-being is really important, especially when you wor- work remotely. Um, that's your mental state, your physical state, right? Uh, and and you want to make sure that part of that is setting realistic targets. Um, I'll talk about that uh, a little bit in the next in the next section. But but yeah, just be realistic about what you're capable of. And uh, at the moment, don't get carried away. Um, as I said, um, take regular breaks. Now everyone's used to if you're in an office, you're going you know a cup of coffee, go for a cigarette, whatever. You know people go and group together, right? If you're going away, just say listen, it's 10:15. I'm going. What about everybody else? Turn yourself on to 
do not disturb, right? The worst thing is that you're trying to call someone, your team stepped away, but no one's told you, right? So just just, just, just make sure you do it. But And if you've got family uh, or if you've got pets or whatever, just take take an exact break, right? And go and do something with them, right? And go, you know, go, and, go and throw the ball around the yard with the, uh, with, with, with the dog or, you know, uh, uh, um, be a slave to your cat because obviously all humans are slaves to cats. Um, and, uh, and that's really important to break up your day and to sort of refresh yourself. Um, it's not a case of working flat out till the end of the day and then going, oh, I can now rest. That's, that's really not how it works. Um, and I've lost two images, how, how dreadful. But um, uh, so find time for play and fun, right? Human beings uh, are, are, are very dependent on fun and smiling and laughing and playing together, especially if in a family group. Really important you do that. Um, don't just plonk on... Uh, plonk on the sofa and just scroll through Facebook or Twitter, uh, you know, engage with each other in that local physical physical context. You'll need it because you're you're missing that physical context on what your 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 psychology is used to on a working day. So make sure you make time for the other humans or other other life forms in your in your home, uh, whatever they may be. Uh, and take exercise. We are not. And I, I'm terrible at this, but uh, we are not meant to be sedentary, right? Um, take exercise really, really hard. I know in this time when some people are in like, you know, shelter in place, you know, in the UK here, we've got, it's okay to go exercise once a day, stay two meters away, you know, follow the advice, go for a walk. If, if you're lucky enough to be in an area where you can just head off into the wilderness for a bit. Um, lunch is great. I, I try and do that and just take a sandwich and just walk around and in your own thoughts and, and, and amazing how much nature you can actually hear. Now the cars have stopped. Um, but it's really important um, that you do that. And if you're in a family group, that's a really nice thing to do in in a, in a family environment. Um, what have I got? 15 minutes. Okay. Um, so we've got here then goals and rewards, uh, uh, which is which starts really with with this the realistic uh, assessment of your capacity, right? So it's not capability; it's capacity. Uh, your capacity will 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 drop, right? If you're if you're not used to this, it, you will not be performing at the same level. Um, especially what's with going on, you probably won't be performing anyway, even if you're in an office at the same level. If you're a leader, make sure that you you give in. I mean, I, I you know when I, when I when I move teams from working in an office into into a remote environment, what I always say is is I'm dropping 20 percent, right? And I always say whoever I'm sending reports up to or reporting to, you're not going to get any feedback from me or, or the team about performance, etc. For four weeks, that's what that's how long it takes. Um, I found that a team will take two weeks to really build a proper mental model and behavioral model for themselves at home. And it takes another two weeks to embed and sort of really sink into those souls. Uh, so you've got to be realistic about your capacity. Um, and then be realistic about what, what you expect from your colleagues, right? They're going through the same things. Um, be really active about saying, listen, I know we were we normally do X, Y, and Z in this time frame. Let's just do it in X, right? Um, and most of you, especially the audience of, of, of this conference, uh, is hopefully used to working in Agile and uh, how leadership sort of bubbles up and how you can self-organize um, and self-regulate. And what I would say, if you're not used to it, uh, then it's very much a case of work amongst yourself to work out what's really, really possible. Uh, involve your leaders. And as a leader, just make sure you're taking that back. There's no point in the team saying, I can, we can only do 80%. And you going, actually, lads, you you know, you need to be at 120%. Uh, that's, you know, so be sensitive on that. Um, one of the key things that I find is the ability to adopt formal approaches, right? And I know it sounds very much, ah, oh, you're talking about, you know, ITIL. No, I'm not. What I'm talking about is, um, and, and it's a really simple thing, I always use a tour. And a tour yeah. is a, a, a terms of reference. Um, and a terms of reference is uh, really uh, four things. It is who's involved uh, in, in whatever group activity you're going through, um, uh, what they're bringing to that activity, what's expected of them in the meeting, and obviously what the whole thing is about. Uh, and if you frame that and give them at least 15 minutes, 20 minutes advance notice of that, people will bring their best game to that group activity. You can keep your time box, right? Really important time boxing when you're working remotely. If you don't know what time boxing is, Google it or whatever your search engine preferences. Um, and it's and it's uh, and it's a great way to keep control of your time. Um, you know what the you know, time management that we that we started with. Um, in that group, obviously, as well, it leads you kind of neatly on to ask for help. We are really bad at asking for help. Um, in my technical discipline, um, yes, I mean, I'm really bad at asking for help, and I have to actively make sure, uh, you know, is hubris, um, is, is hubris creeping in, or am I going to raise my hand and say, ah, I'm lost, what's going on? Uh, especially if you're remote and if you're not used to doing it and you're suffering through technical problems, all sorts of other problems, it's okay to say, uh, folks, I'm, I'm drowning a little bit here, help. And people will step in, right? Um, and 
you know, it's really important to do that. And as a leader, it's really important to spot. And you know, we spoke earlier about people being silent. You can be silent through inactivity as well as being quite loud vocally. So, you know, you've got to learn, you've got to understand your team and hopefully you already do before they went all remote. And so you can spot behavioral changes that you think, okay, that, you know, you know, he or she needs, needs some help there. Um, and of course we have this thing in our discipline and I'm probably, I'm assuming that you all know this, that, you know, uh, what you, what you can't measure, you can't manage. Right. And as I said earlier on, it's all this, this whole remote working, a large piece of it is about managing yourself. Um, so make sure you take qualitative and quantitative measures, which basically means, um, it's okay to say, oh, I've completed X amount of tasks, but you've got to work out at the end of the day. How am I feeling at the end of the day? Am I just exhausted? Is my, am I doing too much or whatever? Um, and finally, uh, treat yourself and your family. Right. Um, it's a hard time to be doing this. It's a hard time anyway. Uh, little treats, right? Little group activities. Um, obviously, with restrictions, be be kind to each other and and, and treat each other. Um, and and things will go much easier. You're going to be in this space that you're not all used to sharing for this amount of time. So you know, uh, let things slide that you normally wouldn't, if you want. Right. Remember what's important rather than what's um, what might have been important before. Um, and and those are really my, my main themes. Um, finally, and I hope I haven't rushed too far through this, um, what I would say is that this is an extraordinary time that we're going through. Uh, everyone's anxious. Everyone's uh, There's a lot of change going on, there's a lot of fear of security, etc. Um, and no matter how resilient you think you are, um, let me assure you, your mental health will take a hit. It's absolutely okay that uh, to to experience that. It's nothing wrong. There's nothing you're not you're not being weak or anything nonsense like that. It is you're you're, you're taking the pressure and your mental health will suffer. Connect with your your peers. Connect with people around you, um, right? Because that's what you need in order to survive this kind of event. Uh, and always respond with like kindness and understanding and compassion when you see that from someone as well, please. Because you know uh, basically because the universe is a very very finely tuned balance of justice and what goes around comes around if nothing else um so whatever whatever really futures hold for us right i think any organization who's gone remote should understand that that the greatest wealth that they have is their, their human capital right your your people are your your business um so so really be considerate about what they're going through how they're trying to adapt and support them as much as possible if you're a leader this is when you are needed Right, leadership isn't about managing spreadsheets and 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 flowcharts and 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 HR events. Right, it is about this. It is about the support and the example that you set. So, so step up. And it's uh, it's 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 going to be it's going to be a, a, a quite a hard time to go through. But I think uh, I think we'll all learn a lot from it and a lot from each other. And finally, I would I would say you know take really good care of yourself and stay safe. And uh, I wish you all the best. And I wish your your loved ones all the best. Thank you very much for listening.